In this video, I'm going to explain how to use the Vernier app graphical analysis. First, you need to download and install the app. If you go to vernier.com, you can click on Downloads, and you can see here Graphical Analysis 4. It's a free download, so click on the free download, and then you can scroll. You can download for Windows, Mac OS, the Chrome Store, App Store, or Google Play. Once you have it downloaded, you want to run the application. When you run Graphical Analysis, you should see this. What we're going to learn today is how to do manual entry. So we'd click on manual entry. You'll notice here the first thing you see is a data set table and a graph. When we begin, we begin by relabeling these columns because in physics we don't measure x and y, we measure things like length and period of the pendulum. So we'll use that example for this. You click on these three dots here for x, choose column options, and we're going to call this length. Give it a name. The units will be m for meters. And I click apply. I do the same thing for the y column options. I'm going to call this period, units s for seconds, and apply. At this point, I'm ready to begin typing in my data. So I get my data, and I just type in length 0 0.165, and 0 0.86, 0 0.255, 1.06. 1.1, and 2 2.14, 1.18, 2.22, 2.4, 2.41, 1.52, 2.50, like so. Notice that as I was typing the data in the data table, it was automatically graphing this for me. Now, in physics, a lot of the things that we like to graph, we like to have 0, 0 in the corner here. So since that's not in the corner already, I can, I can tell it's do that by clicking here on the graph tools, edit graph options, and then scaling, I'm going to change from automatic to, nope, looks like it's cutting off there, always show zero. So if I go always show zero and close that out, that puts zero, zero right here in the corner of my graph. Also in those graph options, I can give a title. So I might call this the period versus length of a pendulum. Now I've got a nice title on my graph. Uh, everything is labeled automatically, and it looks pretty good. So at this point, I notice that the data, I want to do a best fit. So if I want to do a best fit, I go to Graph Tools, Apply Curve Fit, Notice it defaults to the linear fit, and I can see that's actually a pretty good fit. But if you remember from class, we learned uh, the question we ask ourselves to know if the linear fit is in fact the best fit. Does this intercept make sense? To answer that question, we need to understand what the intercept of a graph represents. Now in math, you learned that the intercept is where this line or curve fit crosses the vertical axis. So the value here looks like it's about 0.9 or so. But to understand the meaning of the intercept, we need to ask ourselves, in terms of the pendulum, what would that represent? Well, that would represent as the length gets closer and closer to zero, does the period get closer and closer to 0.9 seconds? And that does not make sense. It really should, as the length gets closer and closer to zero, it really should get closer and closer to zero. And so if we imagine a point down here at zero, zero, and we can see then that curve that would fit there, that would be a, a side opening parabola. So recognizing the shape is a side opening parabola, and I know the relationship between the variables for a side opening parabola is that the y squared is proportional to the x, or in this case, the period squared is proportional to the length. And it's at that point where I realize I need to create a new column of data where I square the periods. So I go up here to my data set. I'm going to click on the three dots, not those three dots, sorry, these three dots here for period, because I want to create a column of period squared. So I go to click the three dots, I'm going to add a calculated column. When I do this, I'm going to give it a very clever name. I'm going to call it period squared. Period squared, and the units of period squared will be second squared. So there we go. I'm going to set the precision. Notice it defaults to three decimals. I'm going to change that to three significant figures. And then there's a button here for insert expression. I'm going to click on this expression, and I get all these expressions that I could possibly use. 
uh, for linearizing the types of graphs we're going to see in introductory physics, pretty much the first two are the only ones that we really need to worry about. So we can see the one that's going to allow us to square the period is this first one, a times x to the b, where a, b, and c are parameters we can set. So I'm going to choose that. I want parameter a to be 1, because I, I don't want to multiply it. I just want to do period squared. So I'm going to set the exponent here to a 2. So I now have 1 times the period squared. That's what I want. I click Apply, and it gives me this period squared set of data. Notice that when it did that, it also updated my graph. So I now have period squared and length. I can click on the axis label, and I can go back to the original graph by setting that up, or this one here. This is what I want, the period squared and the length, and we're good to go. And I somehow zero did not get in that corner. There we go. I can just click and drag that zero like that. Now at this point, I want to do that linear fit again. So I'm going to go to the graph tools, apply curve fit. Notice the linear one is the default, and that is a good fit. The intercept is where I expect it, so I just click apply. And as soon as I do that, I can see the slope and the intercept are given right there in that little window for the graph. I can also adjust if I want in edit graph settings. I can adjust the x-axis range because I just dragged it, but I can hit zero there so that it goes from zero. And uh, there you go. You can change things like lines and points or both and that kind of thing. But uh, I've got this nice box here that tells me the slope and the intercept. Now it does not tell me the units. And since the slope is found by doing rise over run, I look at the units. Second squared over meters. So 4.112 seconds squared over meters, that's going to be my slope. My intercept, 0 0.06737, is going to be in seconds squared because that is the unit of the y-axis here, the vertical axis. And that is how we use the Vernier graphical analysis application. Now, up here there's a button that says Untitled. And this is the File menu. This is where I can save this graph if I want to. So if I click here, I'm going to save. Now I'm on a Windows machine right now, and so it's going to take me here to my desktop or my documents or whatever. I give it a name. If you're using this on a Chromebook, when you when you click up here, you want to make sure that you save it to your Google Drive. Don't save it to the Chromebook. Save it to your Google Drive. Then you'll have access to that file anywhere you are that you have access to your Google Drive. That's how you'll save it in case you need it for lab report or those types of things. And that is how you use the Vernier Graphical Analysis application.